Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, Gwyn I'm Jabari George. I am the project lead for Door Heat Exchanges. I'm going to be giving the update for um, the sub project for this year. So I am actually leading the group alongside um, Martin Dorich from Rital. Um, he's here somewhere. I just can't, I can't see anyone, but I think he's Nero. Um, yeah, and he's, uh, they also have an exhibition um, with Rital, so you can check it out on the expo hall um, when you get some time, okay? So I'm just gonna start first with the obligatory overview of the heat exchanger project. So what are the goals? What are the in-scope activities? Um, so for every sub-project, you have to contribute documentation and products to develop um, the wider community of solutions. Um, then beyond that, lower barriers to liquid cooling adoption. And then, of course, harmonize with the other sub-projects like Cool Plate, like um, Immersion, and beyond within OCP. And then in terms of what's in scope and what's not, um, or rather what's in scope, the operating conditions and parameters for door heat exchanger, that type of liquid cooling, and then um, the metrology of heat extraction or heat exchange, what you need to be looking at, what determines what's a good heat exchange and what's not, and then um, the requirements for specific rack architectures. So um, that would have started with ORV123, that evolution, and then um, EIA310 um, 19 inch racks. And now that's going to, you know, or, or, ORV wide, or open rack wide, open rack double wide and you see some of those products um, appearing on the expo hall floor now. So that, in addition, is, um, is being expanded. And then, of course, we are defining different solutions for Dorit exchanges, uh, sorry, for facilities that are air-cooled or liquid-cooled because they are different implementations of the Dorit exchanger technology. So just as, uh, just to mention, I should say, the, we kicked off a community presentation effort this, um, this year. So these are informal presentations um, by community members within the Doit Exchanger Group. It's just an opportunity for members to talk about their solutions and problems and to uh, kind of provide a platform that is informal on a monthly or biweekly basis for um, our members to interact. So we had three of note this year. Well, they're all good, but um, <laughs> these uh, were particularly beneficial because they would have generated other things. So for instance, we had Grundfos, which was the first. They talked about um, their TCS flow control using distributed pumping that actually was um, spun off into a work stream. And then we had Lawrence Berkeley National Lab come in to talk about uh, the operational and maintenance concerns or um, things that they encounter while they have been implementing or deploying different, different liquid cooling solutions. Okay, and then we had test energy, which was a bit um, left of field. They were just talking about um, how to uh, implement their th thermal and heat energy storage solutions with a solution like a door heat exchanger where you're so close to the heat generation component. So that was an interesting discussion that happened last month. And we continue to um, invite members of the community to offer up their, um, their time. And hopefully, we can spin more work streams out of those discussions, OK? Um, yeah, so before I get to what we did this year, I just have to talk about some context, right? And that's going to be within um, what I call the future of low heat exchanges. So I did this um, a schematic, I guess, or a plan of how um, those door heat exchanges can be deployed. And it's just to emphasize that they are quite a versatile um, door heat, uh, liquid cooling solution. You can deploy door heat exchanges um, in the context of new builds or retrofits. And we talk about these new high power racks, high density data centers that are all new builds and we, that they make the news all the time. We also have a lot, millions of square feet of existing white space that has to be retrofit or can be retrofit. That is real estate that needs to hold its value and continue to produce. You can deploy DOIT exchanges there. Beyond that, DOIT exchanges can be deployed using um, facility water directly, so the FWS, or the TCS, so with or without a CDU. That is one of the advantages of this particular DOIT exchanger um, liquid cooling solution technology or technology. Beyond that, 
we have low density deployments, high density deployments, and mega high density deployments. And on the low side, we have um, air assisted um, door heat exchangers and traditional door heat exchangers. So, and we'd have fleshed this out on a white paper from a couple years ago. Um, that's on what we would call the lower density side, so what is now considered about up to 20 kilowatts. As you go from about 20 to 50 to 70 kilowatts, you'd want to look at the hybrid door heat exchanger where you are integrating cool plates and door heat exchangers. And then beyond that, if you attended our um, presentation yesterday by AMD and WeWin, um, you'd have seen the new sidecar definition that we are trying to flesh out, where we go up to about 500 kilowatts. Okay, so in terms of flexibility of the actual liquid cooling solution, door heat exchangers are quite adaptable. So within that context, you look at the um, state of the market right now. So my intention with this slide was to have a, a display above me. But um, in terms of low density, which is where we've been for the past uh, 20 years about, um, it was a, a simple rack, quote unquote, where you would be looking at ORV1, ORV2, ORV3. Um, you have your memory, networking, compute, all in one rack, and it was cooled and supported by the facility systems. So on the cooling side, it'll just be um, the typical uh, heat transfer or air conditioning system uh, supporting this, this white space. Um, it was pretty straightforward, and you had a lot of range in terms of where you could deploy a data center, quote unquote, right? Now we're in the high density phase, and you're seeing impacts from the rack all the way up to the facility. Right, so the racks themselves, you're looking at different form factors. I mentioned earlier the, um, the ORV wide or the open rack wide, open rack double wide. Um, you're seeing us playing with those form factors and the immersion as well as another um, form factor for, um, for rack deployments where you know, it's breaking from the tr traditional 19 versus 21 inch rack um, uh, form factor. And then two. For the, uh, for the high density facilities, you have to, well not have to, you're seeing a disaggregation of uh, networking versus power versus cooling. So you're seeing solutions like Meta's Catalina. Um, you're seeing the sidecar solutions. What you're seeing is a, a, a white space that is reducing in terms of the size of the rack, but increasing in terms of the supporting infrastructure and um, as you kind of increase that voltage, increase the arm, the power, increase the cooling requirements, the facility also has to respond in kind, right? So you can't, it doesn't, that doesn't occur in isolation. And you're gonna see facilities now looking more and more like plants. So that's the middle um, schematic there uh, in terms of power generation on site, in terms of more advanced um, heat transfer and cooling solutions going from, you know, Dry coolers may have worked in the past, and now because of sustainability um, concerns, you may not have, you can't use chillers and things like that. So now the, the facility itself is going to have to be adapted to um, support these new high-density architectures within the, uh, the facility. And then beyond that, we have quantum, right? And who knows what's that gonna, what that's going to look like? But because the door heat exchanger does not actually touch the chip, um, we have a lot of flexibility there in terms of how we deploy um, those chips, whatever they look like, right? So what we chose to do was look at alternative alloys and metals, alternative form factors, and alternative um, coolants, or rather how um, you would manage the coolants. And thinking of the problem like that, in terms of how we wanna attack um, the high density problems, um, our work streams came out, that came out of this analysis from within the group, were aluminum heat exchangers, um, the AALC sidecar solutions, and then TCS flow control, okay? So that first work stream, TCS flow control, that's the newest one. We were looking at um, ask, uh, answering questions coming from the community about how do we deploy um, door heat exchangers. Yes, there's a lot of flexibility, but the design changes based on how you, how your facility is arranged, whether you have an existing TCS, whether you have CDUs, 
whether you just want to implement closed circuit air assisted DOIT exchanges. So um, we formed a work stream around that with, um, with Dan Foss and Grunfoss. And the two approaches that were initially targeted were valve control. So we had um, Dan um, kind of providing their expertise with valving and how, what that would look like and the considerations if you're going to use valves. And then we had the ground first distributed pumping um, approach. And they've kind of fleshed that out. And that presentation is going to be later on today. It's going to be very interesting. A note on this work stream, it was initially closed. And then we opened it up. Right, so uh, <laughs> the presentation is going to cover two systems or two approaches, but beyond that, when we opened it up, the first two meetings that we had, we got a lot of input from the community about different things we have to consider. So whether or not you have a CDU, whether or not you have a sidecar, uh, all those um, integration and complexities, uh, <laughs> we, we are, it's going to expand significantly the white paper that we are that we're putting out. So the presentation today is going to just cover two of those, and we're hoping that uh, as that work stream develops, we'll have more information for you in the future. Okay. For the second um, work stream was the mega AALC for hyper identity AI. Um, that actually was a presentation that was done yesterday. So that was between AMD and WeWin. They actually built a prototype uh, sidecar that they use to kind of match to their theoretical data. And that's what you see there pictured. But the white paper itself is pretty granular. It goes beyond just performance. It really tries to um, establish a baseline for a spec. Not a spec, it's a baseline for a spec. So it talks about um, the dimensions, the component classifications, and that's in terms of criticality. So um, what can be changed online, what can be um, spared, et cetera. And then the coolant type considerations. So two phase versus um, single phase, the materials that are, the material compatibility for each of those types of coolants, um, the electrical, the instrumentation. Um, it really goes into detail about considerations for deploying these different types of sidecars. Beyond that, we did kind of delve into the performance. So we have some empirical data, and they would have talked about that at a previous presentation as well as yesterday. Uh, but in terms of the performance, which a lot of people asked about first, we would have seen um, evaluating both a five degree and a 10 degree approach temperature that we would have gotten a 30 to 40% uh, cooling power consumption reduction, right? So it's a pretty significant um, improvement when you um, transfer to, when you compare a traditional low weight exchanger to a sidecar, right? Um, so that's power consumption. There were also advantages in the cooling efficiency as well as the cooling capacity. Right, so there's a lot to be gained there from just changing that form factor. And yesterday we'd have talked about um, once we'd actually built a, a prototype, some advantages and that we, that weren't apparent at first. Like for example, um, the AC versus DC fans and the power savings and performance advantages that you can get from that change as well. Finally, we uh, had another work stream on, uh, on integrating aluminum heat exchangers into data centers. So this has been sort of a thorn in the side of the data center industry for a while, just because everyone wants to use aluminum. There are a lot of advantages. Um, it is more sustainable. You have, a lot, you have weight reduction. Um, it's uh, recyclable. You have comparable thermal performance because of the, um, how it's worked, not the actual material. Um, thermal performance, but uh, its workability and how you will actually form um, the fins, tubes, or whatever factor, form factor you, you decide to use in your heat transfer device. Um, and of course, the cost compared to copper, right? And then uh, within the white paper, we, we identify that uh, the sustainability goal um, for even pursuing this in the first place, but then we talk about um, corrosion mitigation strategies, the design considerations, because Within this um, work stream, we were partnering um, Valeo and OVH Cloud. So Valeo comes from the automotive industry, and their heat exchanger form factors would have been different from the OCP form factor, right? And o OVH Cloud also has their, um, their idiosyncrasies with how they deploy their servers and their racks. So that said, the physics are still the same. The corrosion management is still the same. The performance is still the same. So it should apply uh, to any implementation of a aluminum heat exchanger. Okay, so that's fleshed out 
or being flesh out in the white paper. Um, but we did. One of the goals was to show that, hey, if you go through all this trouble, quote unquote, to get this, heat, this aluminum heat exchanger deployed, you can't expect comparable performance. So the graph on the top was the theoretical performance that was assessed when we were looking at a typical um, copper aluminum tube fin heat exchanger and um, what we could expect using a fully aluminum um, heat exchanger. And yeah, so you'd see at the bottom there, the results from what was deployed earlier this year, the prototype, um, just showing a copper five roof versus the aluminum heat exchanger that the heat exchanger, the heat exchanger that was achieved under similar flow conditions was virtually the same. Okay, so that's coming along really well. Um, we kind of advanced the performance analysis. Now we're looking at the uh, corrosion uh, behavior over time, as well as monitoring the coolant, um, the uh, chemistry of the coolant over time. So just kind of managing that, okay? And we're gonna have that uh, done between now and, and May next year, because that's gonna take a while, just to understand how the coolant performs over um, under, under different flow conditions and considering all the different materials that are in that loop. So look forward to that as well. <coughs> so these are the presenters. They are here <laughs> now supporting and it's been really incredible working with these guys. They've done a lot of really, really hard and good work um, over the past year to get, um, to build these prototypes, to do the testing, to, to meet every day, to discuss the results figure out what was worth reporting, what was not. So if you see these guys around, I mean, look, look out to them, congratulate them, talk to them about their work and the products that they've, um, that they've been kind of contributing to solve these problems in the data center industry. Um, just wanted to mention also that they are, um, these are just the guys that are presenting, right? We have a lot of support from the community, from Zutico, from WeWin, from Meta, from a lot of um, the door heat exchanger community that come into the calls and vent. And vent <laughs> does a lot of work too. Um, and it really is a group effort to get, these, um, to get these white papers out, to get this analysis done, to get these you know, deals signed and um, prototypes built. So it's a lot of effort. Just want to thank the guys. It's been a real honor working with them for yet another year. Uh, so yeah. In terms of how you can get involved, here are the QR codes for our um, wiki and mailing list. We have more um, uh, efforts that are gonna be launched out into next year. We're looking at maybe some coolant, um, diff some different coolants that we're gonna launch just given the unique ability of the, of the heat exchange, of the door heat exchange to not interact with the electronics at all and still provide that, um, that liquid cooling performance, right? So that's one thing that we're looking at. There are others. So if you wanna get involved, um, take a snapshot of the QR codes, get in touch with me or Martin, and um, we'll find a role for you, okay? Um, that was it for me, uh, any questions?